I hereby call the August 26th City Council meeting to order. Please stand, and we're going to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councillors. Councillors, we have a pretty lengthy uh, agenda tonight, but after we get to uh, number four, I'm going to recognize Council Cruz on a late file, please. Number one, Mr. Clerk. We have the acceptance of the minutes of July 22nd, 2019, City Council meeting. Accepted and placed on file. Accepted of the minutes of August 5th, 2019, special joint meeting of the school committee and City Council. That too is accepted and placed on file. We have the appointment of reappointment of Joe Miranda of 19 Wallace Street, Brockton, to the Community Cable Television Board for a term of three years. Referred to Finance Committee. We have the reappointment of Kenneth Galligan of 25 Messina drive to the Brockton Zoning Board of Appeals for a three-year term. That to refer to Finance Committee. Council Cruz, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, due to, um, you know, obviously, uh, there's been some hubbub in the mayor's office uh, over the last months, and uh, something was missed to be sent over, but I do have a late file in the hands of the clerk, but I'd like to make a motion that we accept the late file and act on it this evening under suspension of the rules. Second. Second. It's a motion made, properly seconded, to uh, accept the late file. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. We're going to uh, act on the suspension of rules. All in favor of that, please raise your hands. All opposed, that's going to carry as well. Mr. Clerk, please. Promotion of firefighter Benjamin D. Denny to the rank of fire lieutenant in the Brockton Fire Department. Good evening. How are you tonight? Please, please come to the podium. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hi, how are you? Good. Do you have a statement for the council? No, just uh, thanks for the opportunity for the promotion. Thank you for your service to the city. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take a roll call vote now, please. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monahan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's 11 in the affirmative. Thank you. The motion is hereby confirmed. Council Make a approves. motion for reconsideration in the hopes it does not prevail. Second. 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 Motion made properly. Second. Reconsideration in the hopes it uh, does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration, raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand. It does not. Congratulations. <laughs> Council is going to take a two minute recess.
Yeah, it is. We're on. Uh, we're going to go on to number five, please. Petition to Germany N3 Nominees Trust, DBA Sunny's Car Wash, 40 Chilton Road, Brockton, Mass, for transfer of a garage license located at 107 to 1050 Main Street, Brockton, in Council June 19, 2019. Hearing is signed for August 26, 2019, 7 p.m. All paperwork on file. Fire Department has no objections. Cost is a public hearing. I hereby open it. Anyone here in favor, please come forward and state your name for the clerk. Evening, Mr. President, Attorney Jake Creedon, 71 Legion Parkway, Brockton. With me is Sonny Aristotamian, who's the principal uh, in Germanian th Three uh, Nominee Trust. A uh, little background on who Mr. Aristotamian is. Owns two other major car washes in Brockton, has for 20 years. The one at uh, Sonny's up at Westgate Mall and the other one on North Main Street. The particular one that we're talking about here is the one down in South Main Street that uh, uh, certainly, as a Brocktonian knows, that uh, there was trouble down there after, after closing hours. The place <laughs> itself uh, has uh, six bays of self-service. Do your own car. That's the all-night situation. The during the day situation, there is a detailed express where you go through and have it done. Uh, he has anywhere from three to four employees there, and for security purposes, other than cameras, he has um, one of his employees who's the manager lives next door to the property, correct, Sonny? Yes. And uh, so this, there, there is that kind of security there. Uh, Sonny is always in Brockton managing the uh, all three places. Uh, it's a, I think the parking lot itself is in good shape. Um, uh, we are aware, and I, in fact, I was the one that tried to talk Sonny out of, out of buying that, but again, in the interest of pro-business to keep, uh, you know, something going like that, Sonny stepped up and he said he'd do what's ever necessary to keep it a secure place. Uh, again, we're seven days a week, seven to, you know, seven to seven for the uh, detail, uh, excuse me, the express place, and the others go all night, the, the uh, self-service. That's by coin operation, and it's, uh, I think, $3.00. Sonny. <coughs> Sonny lives on Chilton Road and he's always around, always available. And anybody that's dealt with him knows the type of person he is. Thank you, Attorney Creedon. Anything, anything further? I think that's uh, about it. Consignary, this is your ward, correct? It is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sonny, good evening. Pleasure to have you here and, and pleasure to welcome you, um, you know, to the location, uh, to what used to be Ernie, uh, Ernie's Touchless uh, Car Wash, which uh, I do business with uh, quite a bit, to be truthful with you, so I'm, I'm in and out and down there myself. But, um, you know, my concern is, I, I think the attorney also mentioned it, is, is our concern um, is what transpires after the hours, after the, after it gets dark and way late into the early morning, seems to be when we have some problems, and even Bob had problems as well. So I, I have to ask you, that I have to, we have to have some type of a correction to that, Sonny, to be truthful with you. You know, I'm not, I don't want to, one thing I don't want to do, I, I never want to put a business out, I really don't, because I think we can all work together with it. And I think you probably understand what has been going on in, in your back end is in where neighbors are right there, they can look out a window, they can see somebody doing some other things. And, you know, I just, um, I have great, great concern, um, you know, great concern with that part. But other than that, um, you know, I wish you the best of luck, but please, We've got, to, we've got to do something. He obviously has had no problems at any of the other two places, but I think it's important that the, through you, Mr. President, that they know that this investment was a little over $2 million. Right. So, I mean, his heart and soul is in I it. I know, I know. He it doesn't do something to keep that security and the, the confidence of the city councils in that area, then uh, it's a big investment loss for him. And it's the same, it's the same. You have the, you have the place on Belmont Street too, which is in my ward as well. And, um, you know, I, I don't have any problems up there. Once in a while, I see them work a little bit after hours when they shouldn't, but, you know, I don't see any trouble, and I see everything, you know, kept clean, and I know you also do a lot of work with U-Haul up in that location, am I correct? Yeah, because somebody brought that to my attention. I've gone up there and see them. You're right, okay. But you understand where I'm coming from, so, <coughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not denying. I just want to make sure that we can do something down there, and anytime you need to be in touch with me, please do, okay? All right, thank you, Sonny, thank you. Council, you all set? I am, thank you, Mr. Council Chairman. Council Castro, please. Thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, I'm, I represent Ward 4, which is across the street from the touchless car wash. And I, too, have had complaints about the after-hours activity there. 
and the noise and the partying all night long. And I would very much like your reassurance that you're going to address this for the sake of the neighborhood. And so you... In close with the police to see what we can do about it. Okay. Also, it's a Saturday night after 2 o'clock. That's, uh, that's when the trouble's been recently to after 2 o'clock, probably coming from Lucindo's place, but some of them anyway. Right. 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 So we're working on that problem with the police. Yes, but there have been evenings when I've left Cape Cod Cafe on Fridays at 9, and there's, there's revelers on the, the car wash property. So it's not just late at night. And so I pointed that out to you, and I ask you to please address it for the sake of all of the neighbors who are being disturbed. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Council. Council Isaac, please. Thank you, um, thank you, Mr. President. As Attorney Creedence stated, uh, Sonny owns multiple businesses in the city, and he's not new to, we've seen him many times before us. And um, a few of those businesses are in Ward 7. And I have to tell you, I have not received any complaints or any calls of any of his existing businesses. So I put my faith in that if he's telling us he's going to, um, you know, take make sure that everything is in order, then it that's the way it's going to be. So I hope you support this um, license transfer, garage license transfer, because I do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank Senator. you, Council. Any other councils have questions? Just one. Consi and Erie, follow up, please. Yeah, just a follow up point, um, Sonny. And, and if, if when you're talking to the police department, if you're having any troubles or difficulties there, please let me know because I, I'll talk right to the chief and I'll talk to a couple of the captains so that we can. That's how we did it the last time with Bob um, when we had this trouble about four or five months ago. So I go directly to. I don't work around. I go directly to. So thank you, all right. Counselor. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else here in favor? Anyone else here in favor? Third and final time. That part of the uh, hearing is closed. Anyone in the chamber in opposition relative to this matter? Anyone? No, no. No, wrong hearing. No, no. On this, on this matter with the car wash? This is the, uh, the car wash downtown. No, she's, she's at the okay. other. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else here in the chamber in opposition? That's the third and final time. I'll close that part of the hearing. The matter now comes before us. If you want to grant, please raise your hand. If you wish not to grant, please raise your hand. It's hereby granted. We will now go on to the next agenda item. Thank you very much. Have a good Thank evening. You, Thank, Thank you. you. Petition of Velasquez Management, LLC, for a transfer of a garage license located at 743 Warren Avenue. End Council, June 26, 2019. Hearing is signed for August 26, 2019, 7 p.m. All paperwork is on file. The fire department has no objections. It's the public hearing. If there's anyone here in favor, please come forward to the podium, state your name. Evening again, Mr. President, Attorney Jay Creed in 71 Legion Parkway. With me is Ed Valaquez, who is the new owner of that premises, and the former owner, Franz Joseph, uh, who had it for almost 20 years. Uh, I, I can, sh I believe, short circuit some of the concerns here. We are tonight looking, Mr. President and members of the council, to get the garage license through. Law obviously is uh, very clear that the owner must be the holder of the garage license. The other two licenses, we've been dealing for several months with um, uh, Deputy Williams, uh, who sent us pictures of all the things that they wanted Mr. Valaquez to update, some were minor, some were major. As of Friday, they came back and inspected. We don't have the letters yet, so I'm suggesting on the motor vehicle repair and on the um, auto body that that go over to the next meeting, but that we that is talk not, about just the garage not license. For tonight anyway. and I, mm -hmm. It's not the, on the agenda tonight, those two matters. Good. Just the garage okay. license. Just the garage license, good. <laughs> but uh, again, he'll be willing to answer any questions. Of course, I can too. It's a very old building. Uh, it was built in, I think, 1946, very tired. Uh, when the uh, Franz owned it, uh, we had a number of incidences as far as the condition, if you will, of the lot and of the building. The inside of the building was very outdated, uh, almost uh, hazardous, if you will. Ed and his family, his brother, they own two other places. Um, Rosendale, where they've been in business for over 30 years, he and his brother, and uh, with an auto body and a spray situation, and they, uh, he would testify under oath, never had a police incident there. He also owns a restaurant, 
Uh, I forget where he said that was, but it's in uh, Boston, Pleasant Bay, in 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 Roxbury. But he again is a hands-on guy. Uh, has already, and again, uh, Deputy Williams sent actual pictures to me, which I passed on to him about a month and a half ago. A whole bunch of what would appear to be violations, you know, the an outdated uh, uh, sprinkler, all those kinds of things old toilet that's, you know, was not good, some hazardous materials near what could be fire things. He's remedied, he tells me, and so I did meet with the deputy earlier this evening, and he does email me back and forth. I think we're gonna get a letter from the fire department indicating that those situations have been addressed and completed, okay? Th those are the motor vehicle and the other ones, and uh, hopefully uh, we, when we get the up in front of this board, uh, the, the council on those other two licenses uh, will be successful. But right now, it's just the garage license. Councilor Ianeri, your ward. It is, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And good evening again, gentlemen. I met with the attorney and, and both these gentlemen, uh, the uh, co-owner, the owner that's coming to be, and naturally the owner that, that's leaving in regards to um, this location, which is right at the corner of Warren Ave and, uh, and Myrtle Street. So. Um, I will have some stipulations of hours that I will present um, after I make a couple of comments. But when I spoke, um, I spoke with uh, the gentleman and with the Attorney Creed, and I spoke to Attorney Creed this afternoon uh, at length. And I was even there this morning visiting with um, the people he had working there. And I spoke with you on the telephone at the same at the same time. Um, so. Uh, my concern was, uh, as I spoke to you, was naturally the, the building in itself and the building needing some work, cleanliness, some cleanup. Um, my concern is with, with parking on the street um, because we've had difficulty over the years with um, the other owners and the people that were probably were running it under, under um, you know, Francis that, that, you know, they were parking on the street, flatbeds in the way, you couldn't turn around, you couldn't turn on the corner if you were, if you were taking a right, uh, uh, if you're coming uh, south on Warren Ave to Myrtle and going up Myrtle, you couldn't. There was no room because naturally you have the other existing building across the way um, that generates a lot of traffic as well. Um, those are some of the current concerns I've had as well as, um, you know, there's been a couple of neighbors with, with some, con some concerns, uh, one of which I think we also addressed was, um, and we'll address it further when we, when we get the, uh, um, the body um, repair license before us when it details spray painting, which is not there at this particular time. This has to be just for vehicle repair maintenance at this point, correct, Mr. Attorney? I mean, that is they correct. understand, he understands yeah. that. And, I, and I, I don't want it to be in any other way, and I do want it to be controlled, is what I want it to be. And please keep vehicles off the street. You've got property in the back, um, and, and there's quite a bit of, I know there's some confusion sometimes of who owns what property because of another neighbor. It makes some confusion, um, and that's something that still has to be worked out. I, never, I don't know if it'll be worked out in my lifetime, to be truthful with you, but in any case, I just, um, I just wanna make sure that we're operating in the right, in the right manner. Sure. So, we did have a big discussion about the spray situation. Right. Ed tells me that spraying uh, means a whole, the whole car. Right. They send them out ever since he owned it because of the situation that we were notified by the city. Right. When there is, for example, an auto repair, when there is a, a fender that's been dented, the product comes as a whole brand new fender, but it hasn't been painted. So most places allow the, the uh, without a spray booth situation to paint the fender. Again, we've agreed that we're not going to do things until we get right. all, all that other right. situations. Right. And, and, the dep and the deputy yeah. chief made that clear to us, yeah. all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we won't be open Sundays. Yeah. Okay. Um, so at this point, I, I mean, my stipulations for, for your hours is the way I see it. Um, I'd like to see it Monday through Friday, like 7.30 to 6. Okay. What Saturday, 7.30 to 5. And then I, I would say, as we all do, close Sundays and holidays. Council, I don't believe you can put steps on a garage license, only on the auto repair or the uh, the, 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 the body. Well, I don't want them open all night long, Mr. Clark, so what do we do? What's that? He, he wants to put steps. I don't believe you can put steps can't put on a garage license. Can't put steps on a garage, license. no. But when they reappear before us, you when can put the stipulations at that time. The place, okay. the place But on the record, it could be noted that you, yes. you'll yeah, be but addressed. I, but but the next time we not e may not even be ready for that, so I don't want a place that's going to be working until 11 o'clock at night. Council, I'll let you go ahead. By all means, put it into the record the minutes you want, and we'll, we'll reiterate yeah, I mean, it again in two weeks. I, I mean, what, what are we doing? I mean, we'll have them open 24 hours, and that can't happen. The question on the garage license is 
just the number of cars that are going to be stored overnight. Right, I didn't that get to that the, part yet. That's the, that's the only question on the garage license. Okay. Yeah. We have no problem, again, even well, though yeah, the I, garage I, license, I, putting those I do want you to. I want you to, to adhere to those hours right now, and then we'll work it if it's something different. We can do that, correct? Yeah. And no more than, no more than, I think it's always been no more than six cars there anyways left overnight. Am I right, Francis? Yeah. You may know that, but right? It's always been that way. So uh, I'll be pleased with that. But I, I need stipulations or, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be going around at 3 o'clock in the morning seeing that you're open. I don't want to do that. Nah. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I, I thought you'd see it my way, and some other people need to start to look at it differently, I guess. But in any case, those are the stipulations that I make. So I put them in the form of a motion if someone wants to accept it. Second. Uh Nope, sorry ma'am, I'm gonna get, get you up here. Right. Not yet though. Okay. All, in favor, who? Here All in favor of the steps. All in favor of the stipulations. Could, could we read it, I'm could sorry, could read it into the record again? We'll just, we'll just give There's it no rule yet, you're still relative in the hearing. To the, it's still the hearing, but relative to the, to the you want it Monday through Friday? Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 6 p.m. Saturday, 7.30 to 5 p.m. Closed Sundays and holidays. It, it, it point of information, point is, of information. It, is that by agreement with the parties, uh, Mr. President? Yes. We said earlier we would go along with it yes. and you'd state it again. Okay. <coughs> just, for Council, just for procedural matters, um, we've given some, some leeway here and I concur with Council. He wants to get on the records. We will, when we revisit this matter relative to repair an auto body, we'll have to restate it and reiterate it at that time for the record. Just want to let you know that. The stipulations were made in a form of a motion. It was properly second. All in favor of the stipulations as stated by the councilor. All opposed, the stips carry. Councilor, any other? Any other? Uh, I'm also at this time, Councilor. Councilor Nicastro. There, there's, continuing on with your hearing, uh, Mr. President, there is someone here to speak on opposition. Right, we're not there yet. Do you have any questions for the applicant or the attorney? I, I just wanted to say, Ward 4 is across the street. We are very concerned about there not being cars parked all along the road. And otherwise, I echo everything that my colleague, Councillor Neary, said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. President. Councilor Lodge Mc uh, McGeary, please. Thank you, Mr. President. This, uh, this corner has been a historic problem from my days in the 90s. Uh, Mr. Creedon, you were up here representing, I think, across the street back in those days. Um, no, I was defending, I think, Franz against the fellow <laughs> across the street, but that's okay. Um, how many cars are we looking at on the lot, since that's part of the garage license? There is a grid that I have that shows 14 spaces, which I will submit when we have the, uh, the other situation. 14, be be 14 because 8 this by 10 six. spaces. Because that, that's a, it seems to be a problem throughout the city now is that we're grant, the license are being granted for X number of cars and, and then as time passes, people seem to forget how to count. So I hope, you know, I, I welcome a, a new uh, owner down in that area and hope that it helps clean up that corner. It is, it, I travel up Menlo Street routinely, up and down Menlo Street. So um, many times I, I'll try and avoid traffic and go up, try and go up Myrtle Street. So. Uh, Councilor, for the record, I've told all my recent clients that I'm 100% in favor of the code enforcement situation that we've had in the last few years. And I make sure, because I reject a lot of people who want to hire me, make sure that they're willing not only to do it, but also have the energy and the money to do it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. And I concur with the Ward 3 Councilor on, on his stipulations. Thank you. Thank you, Councilors. Councilors, again. The garage license is relative to how many cars they can store overnight. It's maxed at six. Right. That's what that's what this matter is. Any other questions from the counselors for the applicant or his attorney? Seeing none, is there anyone else here in the chamber in favor? Third and final time, anyone here in favor? That part of the hearing is closed. Now, if there's anyone here in opposition, please come to the podium. If you could just kindly state your name and your address for the record. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ana Silveira. I've been in, living in that property for 20 years. Have a lot of issues from the beginning. And the address is? 21 Myrtle. 21 Myrtle, thank you. When I first purchased the home in 1999, before Franz Joseph purchased 743 Warren Ave, I was outside in my garden 
pulling the weeds from the beans that had a plant. This happened around May, April, May. He came in, I was facing the back of my home. He patted me on the right side of the shoulder. He told me, this is my property. When you're done collecting the fruits of it, we have to divide. The first time I met him, I didn't know him. Coming from Boston, fresh, new here, with my children. The times go on, little by little, Franz Joseph kept on encroaching my property, little by little. Two years ago, he came in with the Velasquez construction with a bunch of men into my property, dumping trash, I don't know from where. I thought it was, it was from Boston, because when I called the police, I thought that they were coming from Boston with uh, many things, dumping. Over the years, for 20 years, I've been cleaning the property back in, in right side of my home in front of the Mother Street. A lot of dumping. As of right now, if you go there, you see piece of cars dumping the property, tires. I've sent the mayor that passed away pictures of it, and I have a pictures of it to prove it. Activities no longer ago, it comes different men. On his truck, I say Velasco's construction, but I don't know who he is. For two years, Francis Joseph, I think, allow him to do this. For 20 years, I've been suffering, called the police, went to court, nothing happens. Recently, somebody began to help me with this matter. I do not want, I, I am sick and tired of it. I don't want any more trash dumping on my property. The space he has is very, very little space. I think I'm not sure that's the reason why he's been encroaching in my property over the years. I had a paper that said two, on 2003 he purchased the property with his wife. And then again, I don't know. Up to this time, I don't really know this man. Sometimes the police ask me, what is his name? Joseph, Franz, Franz Joseph, I don't really know him. I'm a residential there for 20 years. I have a concerns, there's many activities I'm awake sometimes 3 o'clock in the morning. I go to bed at midnight, 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock at different times. When I begin to call the police over these matters, they come in with the trucks. I've called the firemen. They had on the, my Christmas tree a truck leaking oil. I called the firemen. The firemen went in. They remove it. When the firemen leaves, more stuff come in. The police has gone and advised them. The police leaves, they come back, jumping back and forth. What I'm telling you where is what I see with my own eyes every day. What he has my land that he took, that he's been dumping trash every time I clean, as of right now, I'm not home, but as of right now, you go into those places you see, still jumping and there has not stopped. What he's transferring to Velasquez Construction I also trespassed on my property for over two years, 2017 to now. And I don't remember the date exactly. They were there, I believe, about two weeks ago or more about, I, I don't know for sure. A young teenager, a guy, a different guy, because I don't really know if he's Velasquez, what his name is. I see different guys go in. One time there was a bunch of guys pat on my face. I will tell you when he first arrived in May, he came in, he says to me, in May of two years ago, oh, I bought this property, this property is mine. At that time, because Joseph had removed my garage that used to be there, and the tree. This is everything that I remember I'm telling you right now. Velasquez Construction came two years ago, removed a tree, shaking the tree, moved the foundation of my house, the toilet was moved, and I said to him, you know, you're going to bring my house down. He says to me, oh, sell me your house. I say, where am I going to go? He says, go back to your country. As of right now, you go to my house right now, where the toilet is, that he shook up the foundation of the house and the toilet I have leaking, coming down. And I have no paper in front of me. I'm telling you the truth, what has happened in many years of all these things. And I'm asking you for help because I've been suffering so, for all this year with so, this. So just to explain, and thank you, mm -hmm. and, and you and I have spoken about this before. Yes. Um, we'll get to you too, sir. Just to explain the process. So 
They're here tonight for the garage license, which you freely are allowed to oppose. But the garage license is just how many cars they can keep inside at night. Now, in a few weeks, you're invited to come back to us because they'll be before us again on the auto repair license and also the, the, the auto body license. And those are, those are matters that, again, the Ward 3 Council will address and any councils will address uh, if, uh, you know, after hours working, spraying, stuff like that. So tonight it's just about the garage, but what you just shared with us, I know all of our councilors appreciate that. We feel bad for that. But remember, you are invited to come back again in the future, in a couple weeks, for the other two, and you'll be more than able to come up again. And at that time, Councilor Yaneri will be able to address some of the other issues as well, and any councilor. But I'm not trying to cut you off. If you have some more to say, by, uh, by all means, and then the gentleman can, can speak as well. But there's, there's going to be another hearing as well in the, fu in the near future for these, these people. These applicants. So he's asking for the license to operate to this. T tonight, the only thing that's before the city council is a garage license. It's it's an exchange. It's a purchase. Um, so what we what we are addressing right now uh, is strictly the garage license component. In the future, there'll be two other components. There'll be the repair license and the auto auto body license. And again. You, any applicant, I mean, any applicant will have attorney, and then anybody in opposition is allowed to come as well, and you'll be notified as well. Okay. As of right now, I will tell you my truth. I objection this this thing, this transfer of, of this next to the license. residential area. A lot of more things that I haven't said. Health issues. Too many things that I, I have not said to you. That garage right here next to the residential area with the, everything that's going on with many things. I see it as a, as a health issues. When, you, when, when the police come, yes, they do what they're supposed to do. When the police leave, they don't do what they're supposed to do. And we, again, when the matter comes before us next time, mm -hmm. that's, that's when those issues should be addressed as well. You can be noted on the record as opposing, and the gentleman behind you can speak as well. Okay. But right now, it's strictly a garage repair mm. transfer before us, which, Council, I'll recognize you one second, which would be relative to how many auto, automobiles they can have inside at night, which is limited to six. Council Ian Airy also limited the hours, which we will have to revisit again um, at the next hearing. Six it's, car in the back. Correct. Be aware to see he doesn't have a space in the back for six car. Okay. And go, you check. Thank you very much, Ms. Severia. Yeah. Sir, good evening. Your name and your address for the record, please. Yes, good evening. And thank you for your attention. I'm Father John Keane. I am with the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement at the Chapel of Our Savior in Brockton, right across from the Westgate Mall. And I've been there for about three years. And Anna is one of our communicants. And one of the things that really struck me about the integrity of Anna is she has a son in the United States Marines. She has another son who is studying for, uh, for the clergy. Her mother is at home, and she has her little boy, Joseph, here with her today. She's honest and sincere. And she bought this property. 20 years ago, when she was a young girl. And she has raised her, cham her family of five children all by herself because her husband left her. These are tragic events that happen often, and I hear them many times in the confession. But when it comes to a point where you feel that your property is in jeopardy, she came to me. And I have to admit, that the property outside her home to the left does look a little dumpy. So I said, Anna, please call. I got junk. <laughs> well, I got junk, said it was a little bit too much for them, and she'll have to get a landscaper. But today and other days previous to this, she's been out on the property trying to clean it up. There are, of course, tires on the, uh, on the property, but she has hopes in the future that someday this part of her property can be donated to the church. 
So I'm here to speak on behalf of the integrity of Ana Silviera and hope you all will take that into consideration. Her one big fear is encroachment. Is there fear, I want you to think, very, very seriously, encroachment is something that should never happen. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being here, Father. Councilor Darren Court, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I was just going to ask her a few questions. Uh, you don't mind if she come back on the mic? No, by all means. Um, Ms. Severia, if you could come back up. Uh, Councilor uh, Darren Court had a couple questions, please. Hi, good evening. Uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time to come here. So I just have a few questions for you. Um, have you had a chance to talk to Mr. Velasquez about some of the issues that you've been facing in the past? Have you spoken with him about what happened in the past? Um, I don't know if you have heard everything that I've said here. No, I'm talking about the new person who's about to get that transfer. I'm not talking about Mr. Joseph. I'm talking about the new a tenant that you're about to have up there. Have you had a chance to talk to him? I, I, I listen to what you have to say. The reason I'm asking that question is that I want to know whether or not you both somewhat like sat down and go through some of the issues that you have been facing according to you for the past so many years. So have you had a chance? So many years with who? Well, in regard to that, that space, you said that um, you know, it's not good next to your house and all of that. Uh, can you explain to me? I Let me just explain it to you. So my point to you is that it's like given the fact that it seems like you are very unhappy about what's going on. And as we speak, according to what the president just said, so we are not giving them a license away as we speak. So it is a transfer. So with that being said, although you complain about what um, jo I mean, Mr. Joseph have been doing in the past, given the fact that this is a new person who is about to take responsibility under that space, so have you had a chance to sit down and talk to that person in terms of like whether or not he will be able to clean it and making sure that some of the issues that you have will not be repeated in the future? That's my, that's my question to you. You know, I can't answer that, sorry. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councillor. Any other questions, Councillors? Uh, is there anyone else here in opposition? Third and final time, anyone here in opposition? That part of the hearing is closed relative to the matter before us, which is strictly the garage license. And now I'm going to. Mr. President, may, can oh. I make a brief statement? Okay. It's closed. Concerning what she said. Question of. Council, you may. Yes, just, just a question of Attorney Creedon. The, the issues that were just raised, Yes. am I correct that they related to Franz and Saladini Joseph yes. and not to Mr. Absolutely. So it's, been, it's been to court three different times in the last three years with her bringing a complaint against Mr. Joseph over this very same issue. All hearings took hours. She testified on those three occasions for hours. The cases were thrown out because of two things. One is we had to do a survey and did it. It's land court. And for those that are lawyers who are here, that's the best uh, possible uh, title you can have. It is defined, and we had we went further and had the police put cameras up because she was making these wild allegations about Franz or his workers. And again, she said the police doesn't didn't cooperate with her. They put up video cameras and found all of those things not to be true. And I understand her. Councilors, we get a little bit off point here. Yeah. The, the matter before us is a simple garage license transfer with a new owner and the existing owner. Um, any of the other matters that are germane or that are brought up. We're going to have a later date for the other two licenses. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to entertain granting strictly the garage license with a hand vote. All in favor of granting the garage license, please raise your hand. All opposed, we'll take a roll call vote on that then, please. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? No. Cruz? Yes. Davenport? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? No. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? <clears throat> Sullivan? Yes. It's nine in the affirmative, two in the negative. The garage license transfer has passed. But remember, those that came, Father and Ms. Severia, you'll be invited and welcome to come back here when the two matters that are germane to what the discussion was. And we'd encourage you and, and ask you to come back at that time as well. Okay, we're going to move on to the next agenda item, please.
We have the report of the Ordinance Committee for its meeting of July 24, 2019. Accepted and placed on file. The report of the Finance Committee meeting of August 19, 2019. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Plymouth County Commissioners submitting a warrant in the amount of $151,676.43 under the County Treasurer for payment of the Plymouth County tax for fiscal year 2020. Accepted and placed on file. From the DPW Commissioner, request an authorization to accept monies awarded and under the Commonwealth of Mass Department of Environmental Protection as part of the GAP 2 grant funding program in the amount of $200,000, which requires no match, to be used for the replacement of an existing non-efficient positive displacement blower, blower with an energy efficient turbo blower at the city's advanced water reclamation facilities which is projected to save the city an estimated $41,000 a year and 293,000 kilowatt annually. Accept and place on file. From the mayor recommending the same. Not to accept and place on file. The CFO relative to the same. That also is accept and place on file. We have a communication from the superintendent of parks requesting a transfer of grant funds in the amount of $16,261.60 from parks and recreation, J.R. Park renovations, the city of Brockton parks and recreation and playground renovation. This transfer is for unexpected, unexpended funds from the renovation of GAR Park completed in 2009 to assist in closing the gap between the amount appropriated by the Commonwealth and the cost of the projected renovations to Harold Bent Playground. Improvements include removal of existing tennis courts, repaving, and installation of three volleyball courts and one foot sole court. Accept and place on file. The mayor recommending the same. Not to accept and place on file. CFO relative to the same. Also accept and place on file. The chief of the fire department requested authorization to accept and expend $4,000 from the Commonwealth of Mass Department of Public Health. The fire department intends to use these funds to ban the upkeep of the mass decontamination units, no match is required. Accept and place on file. From the mayor recommending the same. Not to accept and place on from file. The CFO relative to the same. Also accept and place on file. From the chief of police <coughs> department request authorization to accept the spent grant monies related to the executive office of health and human services, fiscal 20 safe and successful youth initiative grant award in the amount of 433,000 $430,000. There is no match required, but there is an in-kind service match provided. Accept and place on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Back to accept and place on file. Communication from the CFO relative the same. Also accept and place on file. Have a communication from the chief of police department request an authorization to accept and expend grant monies related to the fiscal 2020 public safety answering point and regional emergency communication center support an incentive grant any amount of three hundred sixty five thousand five hundred eighty six dollars. Accepted and placed on Communication file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Also accepted and placed on Communication file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Council's add to is accepted and placed on file. We have <clears throat> communication from the grant coordinator of the police department requested to the city council authorize the acceptance and expenditures of the total grant funds in the amount of $275,110.27 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, State 911 Department, Fiscal 20, State 911 Training Grant. These funds will be used to reimburse overtime for ETDs, police officers, and fire department, emergency medical dispatch personnel to attend 16 hours of mandatory E91 continuing education training for annual certification and to pay state 911 department approved certified training vendors to conduct classes at the Brockton Police Department. There is no match required. Accepted place on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too is accepted place on file. Communication from the CFO relative the same. Council is also accepted place on file. We have an order amending licensing and business regulations for marijuana business, section 1.009B2 of the licensing and business regulation is hereby amended. In council, March 11, 2019, ready to refer to standing committee of audience. That report was favorable. Questions on passage to a third reading by a hand vote. All in favor to a third reading. All opposed. 
It passes to a third reading. An ordinance amending revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, Chapter 6, Article 1, Section 6 2, Composition. The Chapter 6, Article 1, Section 6 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be amended to increase the number of fire department captains by one from 17 to 18 <laughs> for a limited period of time subject to a sunset clause. In council, June 24, 2019, ready to refer to standing committee and ordinance, that report was favorable. Questions on passage to a third reading by hand vote. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, it's passed to a third reading, councilors. An ordinance amending chapter one of the revised ordinances, chapter 19, article two, section 19-21 of the revised ordinances is hereby amended relative to police chief. In Council, June 24th, 2019, ready to refer to Standing Committee on audits. That report was unfavorable. Question is on passage to uh, a third reading by a hand vote. If you're in favor, please raise your hand to a third reading. If you're opposed, better do a roll call vote on that one. I didn't see it. Uh, Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. Mr. Mr. President. Oh, Councilor Fowler, recognize you first. Yeah. Mr. President, just on the motion, it, it's, in my opinion, somewhat of a moot issue. Section 60 of the Charter of the City of Brockton reads, upon the adoption of Plan B, all heads of departments and members of municipal boards except the school committee, officials appointed by their governor, and assessors if elected by the people as their terms of office expire shall be appointed by the mayor subject to confirmation by the city council. But the city solicitor shall be appointed and may be removed by the mayor without confirmation by the city council. This section shall apply to the city solicitor in office when Plan B becomes operative. The charter was not only adopted by the state legislature, but it was also adopted by the voters of this city. So in my opinion, and we can ask our legislative council for a formal opinion, whatever we do tonight, the police chief is the head of a department, he's appointed by the mayor, and he's confirmed by the city council. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Resnick, you have? Um, I, yeah, I reiterated the same thing at the ordinance committee um, meeting, that unless the state law says otherwise, that the department heads are subject to appointment by the mayor and confirmation by the city council. Whether that's been adopted by practice in the city of Brockton is another issue. Um, but it was in my opinion that there was nothing in the state law that prevented um, the ordinance from passing. Thank you. I received an unfavorable vote in the ordinance. Okay. So now, the question is on the passage to a third reading. And we're going to do by a roll call vote. So if you vote yes, you want it to be passed to a third reading. Is that correct? Even though correct. it was unfavorable. Yep. All right. Um, ASAC? No. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? No. Darrencourt? No. Ian Erie? No. Farwell? Yes. Lally? No. McGarry? No. Monaghan? No. Nicastro? No. Sullivan? No. That's nine in the negative, two in the affirmative. So it does not pass to a third reading. Bill set. Yep, go on to 31, please. An audit acceptance of expenditures of total grant funds, any amount of $312,615.40 from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program Action Grant to the Mayor's Office Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program Action Grant Fund in Council July 22nd, 2019. Ready to refer to Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Uh, questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. <clears throat> Except as expenditures of the total grant funds at the amount of up to $20,000 from Plymouth County District Attorney's Office, Physical 2017 Violent Gain and Gun Crime Reduction Program Grant, Project Safe Neighborhoods, to Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 17 Violent, Fiscal 2017 Violent Gain and Gun Crime Reduction Program, 
Project Safe Neighborhoods Grant Fund and Council July 22nd, 2019. Brandon referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. E. Neary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. Orders hereby adopted. Audit acceptance and expenditures of the total grant in the amount of $46,971 from the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, Department of Mental Health, Fiscal 2020, Massachusetts Jail Arrest Diversion Program, to City of Brockton Police Department of Mental Health, 2020, Massachusetts, Jail Arrest Diversion Program Fund in Council, July 22nd, 2019. Ready for the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Uh, this is a question on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. Order is hereby adopted, Resolved Council. Resolved that the Mayor Moises Rodriguez be invited to the Finance Committee meeting of August 19, 2019, to provide an overview of the goals and objectives of the administration and to review his first month in office. In Council, July 22, 2019. Ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. Resolve is hereby adopted. Resolve to invite a representative from National Grid to address the concerns of the community regarding the recent manhole cover explosions. In Council, June 24, 2019, Ready to refer to Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. Resolve is hereby adopted. An order submitting Chapter 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton. Section 2-28 Compensation is hereby amended. For the Ordinance Committee. Order that the Sections 26B to 26E, inclusive of Chapter 111 of the Mass General Laws, uh, chapter 111, section 26B through 26E, B and hereby is accepted by the City of Brockton in accordance with section 26A of chapter 111 of the Mass General Laws, chapter 111, section 26A. For an ordinance committee. Ordered that the petition to the general court, accompanied by a bill for a special law related to the city of Brockton, to be filed with an attested copy of this order, be and hereby is approved under clause I-1 of section 8 of article 2, as amended of the amendments to the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to the end that legislation be adopted precisely as follows, except for clerical or editorial changes of form only, an act relative to the appointment of an executive director of health and human services in the city of Brockton. For the ordinance committee, please. An ordinance be ordained by the city council of the city of Brockton as follows. Part two, revised ordinances, is hereby amended by adding the following chapter 25, Department of Health and Human Services. That is also referred to ordinance. Ordered that the mayor and or the real estate custodian be authorized to accept on behalf of the city of Brockton a parcel of land containing approximately 1.4121 acres located and known as Plot 30 Bridge Street, more particularly described as parcel identification number 128-337. It's going to be referred to real estate and finance. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Farnham Street extending from the end of 1965 layout, northerly a distance of about 438 feet, more or less, and for the purpose it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away. 
That also is referred to real estate and finance. But at the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Belding Circle extending from Farnham Street westerly to Belding Circle extension, a distance of 590 feet, more or less, and for that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away of said city. That is referred to real estate and finance. An audit's <clears throat> audit that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Belding Circle extension, extending from Belding Circle northwestly 253.79 feet, more or less, and for that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away of said city of Brockton. That is also referred to real estate and finance. Order that the common necessity and the convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Haskell Street extending from Hubbardton Avenue not only to Belden Circle, a distance of about 663 feet, more or less, and for that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay it as a public street all way of said city of Brockton. Causes referred to real estate and finance. Order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Leahy Road, extending from North Quincy Street eastly to Roslyn Road, a distance of about 1,335 feet, more or less, and for that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away of said city of Brockton. That also is referred to real estate and finance. Audit acceptance and expenditures of the grants funds any amount of $200,000 from the Commonwealth of Mass Department of Environmental Protection, GAP 2, Grant Fund Programming, to City of Brockton, Department of Public Works, GAP 2, Grant Funding Program, Grant Fund. Refer to finance, please. Out of acceptance of expenditures of total grant funds, any amount of $4,000 from the Commonwealth of Mass Department of Public Health, Fiscal 2020, Mass Decamination Unit Grant Fund, to Brockton Fire Department 2020, Mass Decamination Unit Grant Fund. Refer to Finance Mr. Committee. President. Counselor. Mr. President, on that matter, I move to suspend the rules and act on it tonight so the Second. Fire Department can expend those funds. This motion on the floor was properly seconded to act on the suspension rules for agenda item number 46. All in favor of acting on the suspension? All opposed? We will act on the suspension of the rules and we will do a roll call vote relative to this agenda item, please. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darincourt? Yes. Eneary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. Order is hereby approved. Order is acceptance and expenditures of total grant funds in the amount of $365,586 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, State 911, Department Fiscal 2020, Public Safety Answering Point, and Regional Emergency Communications Center Support and Incentive Grants to Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 2020, Public Safety, Answering Point, and Regional Emergency Communications Center Support and Incentive Grant Fund. Councilor Fowell, do you want to entertain this one for a $4,000 grant as well? Four thousand? No. Yeah. Four thousand. Three hundred sixty-five. Yeah, we're on. We're on. Uh, are we on number forty-eight? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Lost track of that one. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's referred to finance committee. <laughs> now let's do it on the suspension. Yeah. What the heck? You all set? Yeah, I'm good yeah. now. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Acceptance and expenditures of the total grant funds, any amount of two hundred seventy-five thousand one hundred and ten dollars and twenty-seven cents from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security State 911 Department Fiscal 20 State 911 Training Grant to Brockton Police Department Fiscal 20 State 911 Training Grant Fund. Refer to finance, please. Audit acceptance and expenditures of total grant funds in the amount of $430,000 from the Executive Office of Health and Human Services Fiscal 20 Safe and Successful Youth Initiative Grant to Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 2020, Fiscal 20 Safe and Successful Youth Initiative Grant Fund. Further finance, please. 
audit the transfer of grant funds any amount of $16,261.60 from Parks and Recreation, GAR Park Renovations, the City of Brockton Parks and Recreation Bent Playground Renovations. For the finances, Mr. 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 Councilor. On number 51, yes. uh, so that they can get the bids out and do the work, I would move to suspend the rules and act on that tonight. Second. Second. Motion on the floor is properly second to act on the suspension rules. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, we're gonna act on the suspension. Roll call vote, please. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGarry? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. If I approve. Mr. President, I move Council. for reconsideration. Second. The does not Second. prevail. It's motion for reconsideration. I hope it doesn't prevail. It's probably second. All in favor of reconsideration, raise your hand. All opposed? Reconsideration does not prevail. It's resolved that the mayor is hereby authorized on behalf of the city of Brockton to enter in tax increment finance agreement with New Westgate Mall LLC encompassing the property described as above, whereby provided New Westgate Mall LLC satisfies certain conditions more fully described in the tax finance and agreement. And be it further resolved that upon execution of the tax increment finance agreement, the mayor is hereby authorized on behalf of the city of Brockton to petition the Mass Economic Assistance Coordinating Council for its approval and endorsement of the tax increment financing agreement. As referred to Finance Committee. All the items on the agenda are available in their entirety for review in the city clerk's office for all interested parties. Uh, Council, uh, clerk, I have two late files, I believe. We have a communication from the city planner requesting authorization to accept and expend total grant funds any amount of $300,000 from Environmental Protection Agency Brownfield Assessment Grant to City of Brockton Planning and Economic Development Brownfield Assessment Grant Fund. These funds will be used for the continued implementation of the 2016 Downtown Action Strategy and a 2017 Urban Revitalization Plan, plan to create a, li li a livable mixed-use, mixed-income, trans-oriented neighborhood and commercial center. There is no match required. That communication is accepted and placed on file. It's communication from the mayor recommending the same. That communication is accepted and placed and on file. And communication from the CFO relative to the also same. Also accepted and placed on file. We have an order of acceptance and expenditures of the total grant funds, any amount of $300,000 from the Environmental Protection Agency Brownfield Assessment Grant to City of Brockton Planning and Economic Development Brownfield Assessment Grant Fund. Council, those are referred to finance, that is referred to finance committee. Any other matters before us? Council, just a reminder, uh, next Monday is a holiday, September 2nd. Uh, so that means we'll be meeting here the following night, September 3rd, Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Uh, anything else before us? I, I, Councilor Neri. I, I do, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And, thank uh, you, Councilor. I, I just do want to make mention of uh, something that um, naturally I discovered today, and I, I know other councilors probably saw and, and other people that were looking on the, uh, the website and even our agenda, but I was very, very dismayed when I looked at item number 52 and saw how that the, the late Mayor Bill Carpenter's name was scratched out and, and just replaced with the word deceased. I'm not gonna put any, any type of blame to anybody or oh point any God. type of a finger, um, but I just think that some compassion should be had when we're still dealing with some things that Mayor Carpenter's name may be attained or attested to at this point, and even as time moves forward, especially with some of the things that he was working on with um, uh, bringing developers and everybody into this city. So I just put out my blurb to other department heads Let's be a little bit more careful and, and let's take in hand that the person's only been deceased not even for two months and, and he served the city for five and a half years. Excuse me, councillors. Excuse me. I can hear you all the way down here, so I just want to excuse me. Okay, and I, indic and I indicate that, that it's only right that you know we pay a little bit of attention to that because I thought it was in, in somewhat of a, a little bit of a very, very bad test and a taste and, and so did other other people, it uh, almost reminded me of how a street got named for me, which never should have happened either. So, sorry if I look like I nitpick, but somebody had to say something. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Neary. Any other councilors? Councilor Beauregard, please. 
Thank you. On a lighter note, today is Women's Equality Day. A hundred years ago, women got the right to vote. Okay. Meanwhile, I'd like to commend some people. I really like our new administration's attitude toward volunteers. And uh, I'd like to commend Lynn Smith for another good time at Frederick Douglass Park yesterday, where we learned uh, Tai Chi and how to keep the negative energy away. It was nice, wasn't yes. it, Councilor? And um, on the br prior to that, some of us went to Family Day. And um, if you get a play-by-play, -play, if you like, by Ollie um, Spears, because um, apparently he was there with his camera. And uh, to commend Arnie Danielson, this is probably the 10th year that he's done this arts and music festival, two nights in a row at um, 33 Dover, and the place was packed. So, you know, good for him, because again, these are people that do all kinds of things for the city and really, you know, never make a dime. So anyway. Thank you very much, Councilor. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Anything else before us? Seeing none, have a good evening. Meeting's adjourned.